Good afternoon. Today is April 10th, 1925. I am Sarah Honeydew for JNS Biblical Productions. I have breaking news of a real life tragedy that just occurred in West Egg, Long Island that fits the description of the parable of the rich fool. The news is that Jay Gatsby, as those who were his friends called him the Great Gatsby, has been murdered in his own lavish marble swimming pool today by a jealous husband who thought Gatsby was in love with his wife Myrtle and then committed suicide. Here to tell us the story is a possible friend of Jay Gatsby, Nick Carraway. Good afternoon. Nick, um, let's get right to it. You knew Jay Gatsby best, right? Um, I guess you could say that, but I don't think that anyone really knew Jay Gatsby. I knew a little bit of his background. He came from North Dakota, said he went to Oxford, fell in love with my cousin Daisy. Somebody said he was related to Kaiser Wilhelm. I mean, all I really know is he became extravagantly filthy rich somehow, and he ended up murdered in his own swimming pool. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> I detect from your summary that you really disapprove of the great Gatsby. What was going on here that our religious viewers can learn a lesson from this man and his murder? Religious um, viewers, my honest opinion, I think he dedicated his life to the achievement of wealth. In the process, he was corrupted by money and dishonesty and just the American dream of happiness. You know, he'd show off his wealth by throwing these extravagant, vulgar parties every Saturday night at his mansion. I mean, the rules of behavior are more associated with amusement parks. But in all seriousness, I think there's an emptiness and a moral decay of the lifestyle of the wealthy. I don't feel any sorrow for his death. I think he had it coming. I see. Well, that seems somewhat cruel since his blood is just now drying in his pool. Is there anyone mourning for him? I could have mourned for him, but I'm in love with my husband, Tom, and Gatsby secretly tried to impress me with his mansion and wealth, but I didn't fall for him and his vulgar drinking parties. Oh, yes, you did, you adulterous piece of trash. Oh, um, it seems like Jay Gatsby didn't have any real friends. Um, how did he make his fortune anyway? Do either of you know? I'll answer that. My husband Tom told me that Gatsby was a criminal who made his money off bootleg whiskey and other illegal activities. We are in Prohibition era, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if he paid government agencies like the famous Elliot Ness to stay away from his parties. You know, Gatsby is so ghastly rich and that whole crowd is rotten. And I realized my allegiance was to my husband Tom so I am a good girl. Can I say something? I view the people in Jay Gatsby's life and their loose morals with disgust. Even you, Daisy, you have no reservations about running around with other wives' husbands. Take your friend George Wilson. He was sure Gatsby was running around with his wife Myrtle. He ran over her like you'd run over a dog. Didn't even stop. And I can see why George shot himself. He was also having an extramarital affair. You're all disgusting. conclusion that our viewers can understand and live with. I'll give you a conclusion. First of all, this woman is a slut. The American dream, the mere pursuit of wealth and happiness, this is why Jay Gatsby's friends called him the Great Gatsby. These were careless people. Tom and Daisy would smash things up and just retreat back into their money. It's not right. So finally, I'm going back to Minnesota in search of a quiet life structured by more traditional moral values. You know what? Miss Beeswax, would you come here, please? Can you escort Miss Daisy here off the premises? Oh, it's you again? This is one of Jay Gatsby's roaring 20s girls. She goes to Charleston for him. Look who's talking. She's Gatsby's personal French maid. You probably don't even speak French. She's nothing but a mongoloid, and he found her in an alcohol rehab center in the Bronx. I've had enough of you here. Jay Gatsby's dead, and you can no longer take his money. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm leaving. But Nick, you should know that this upstairs French maid is nothing but a fake and an imposter, and she probably has never even been to France. 
She should be thrown out with the garbage. She's nothing but a sleep-in slut. At least I can do the Charleston. Okay, show me. More. Okay, let's turn on some music. Fine. Thank you. 